Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Strike Zone with manager George Samus. Strike Zone is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the St. Paul Saints skipper questions about the Saints, baseball, or just life in general. This week, George shares his experiences with the uh, world record pillow fight that they had here at St. CHS Field this last Tuesday night. Tells us a little bit about injuries and uh, returning players as an update, and also talks to us a little bit about some of the idiosyncrasies of life that's going on with him. So we thank you for joining us and let's get right to strike zone. So George, let's just begin by talking about some of the injuries that you have guys recuperating from or that have been going on lately. So let's start start with Steve Nickarak is eligible to come off the DL or off the inactive list this Tuesday. What is his status for you? Yeah, he um, he's getting better. He's been hidden. He's doing everything and um, he is eligible to come off in the next few days. And um, so we'll see what happens. It's possible that it happens that way. Um, it's just more about a roster spot right now, so we'll just see how that plays out. But he is getting close, which is it's a great thing that he's just about ready to play. It's amazing that after suffering an injury like that, that he would be back coming back so quickly. Yeah, when it happened, we thought he was done for the year. We just, I mean, obviously you don't see that every day, and it's, but it'll be 30 days in a few days, and he's made good progress, and he, he's confident, and he's eager to get back on the field. So, you know, hopefully that's what's going to happen. You've talked about in earlier shows that Sam Moss would be eligible at the end of this month, or is that still looking likely for you? Yeah, he's eligible. I think right about now, I think he's eligible, and um, he's close too. It's it could be this week as well. Um, we'll just see, though. I mean, there's times it's a little sore after he swings, so we're, you know we're just trying to play it safe, and especially since we have an extra couple infielders right now, where maybe a few weeks ago we didn't. Uh, maybe we have the luxury of just giving him a little bit extra time. Vin Fazio took a, a ball off of his leg when he was catching a couple days ago and then got hit last night. Is he okay? Yeah, know. he's fine. He's catching today and it's part of the game. Mike Suzalek's so been out for a few days sitting in the dugout. Is, uh, what is happening with him? Yeah, he's day to day. Um, probably going to give him today off as well. Just a, it just, it just needs a few extra days and hopefully it's not a big deal. And hopefully when we get to Gary later this week, hopefully he'll be ready to go. Uh, Mike Kwasnika is still battling back from a, is that a hand injury that he's got? He, um, he had a little foot injury before ankle injury, but now he's fine. He's ready to go. He's playing today. Excellent. So our first question from Hank from Chaska wants to know, do you have concerns about your bullpen with the fact that they have seemed to show some struggles of late? Yeah, they, um, yeah, earlier in the season, they came in and got the job done just about every time, but this last few weeks, it's, they haven't, and, um, and it's been a struggle for some guys, and some guys need to get back to where they were before because, um, you know, they're just not getting it done right now, and it's um, it's disappointing. And the last couple of games, too, we had chances to win both of those games, and, you know, just being pretty honest, the bullpen didn't get the job done, and it's a little disappointing. And But, you know, I guess everybody goes through that, and hopefully that's the end of the struggles, and hopefully today we can get right back on track. Sal from St. Paul would like to know, Robert Coe has pitched so well, including this last Thursday. Do you think he's regaining his 2012 form? Absolutely. He's, um, his fastball, he's got a better fastball this year than he did last year, and he's getting it up. He's 91, 92, and, um, you know, the thing with him is just throwing strikes and command, and, and he, in the past, he struggled with lefties some, and maybe earlier in the season, he was struggling with lefties as well, but he's doing a little bit better lately, and, um, but he's throwing the ball real well, and, and the thing is, last year too, I know he struggled, but I don't think he was fully healthy last year, and he knows it, and he wouldn't say anything about it, and tried to pitch through an injury, and obviously, you know, he wasn't the same pitcher, but this year, he's he's healthy, has a good fastball, and he's he's a real good pitcher for us. Jim from Egan would like to know, he sees you have a pitching coach and a hitting coach, and wanted to know who worked specifically with your defense. Um, you know, we um, they work every day, they take ground balls every day, and and we try to kind of leave the guys alone too. And obviously if we see something where they're maybe not doing something the right way, then we'll talk to them about it. But with the defense though, especially with the, you know, defensively, we've done a good job. Um, Anthony Phillips is, he's been excellent at shortstop making the plays. And I don't think anybody needs to tell him what to do because he, he does a real good job. And Cash Rossi is a good second baseman. And, and when Sam Moss is out there, he's a good second baseman as well too. So defensively, we kind of leave them alone. And, but obviously if we see something, then we'll mention it to him. We have a question. Do you uh, do you change your rotation now that you have these two days off for the All Star break? So, do the guys stay in the same order, or do you 
bump people up because you've had the break. Okay. Well, we have the break, and it's a it's a little luxury for us. And um, you know, with the roster so small, I mean, all year long we've been playing around with the disabled list, putting healthy pitchers on the disabled list, and Kramer Snead's on the disabled list now, but he's not hurt in any way. We just needed the roster spot to, you know, to have an extra arm down in the bullpen, so we activated Mikey Milik and. Um, especially with Zuzalek, maybe not at 100% right now. Um, so we're changing, a little, changing it up a little bit, you know, when we go to Gary, Pedro will pitch the first game, and then we'll have Coe, and then we'll have Crenshaw pitch, and, um, and then when we go to Fargo, we'll, we'll go with Kramer and then Shields. Cyrus from Cannon Falls would like to know, Dustin uh, Crenshaw having such a good season, did you think that he would be this good for you this year? Tell you what, we saw him a few times last year and we thought he was a good pitcher, and but what he's done this year is outstanding, and the one walk is, is amazing. You know, that is something you never see with a guy with one walk and all those innings he's pitched. What, how many innings does he have? He has, what, 87, 87 innings and one walk? That is spectacular, and he's just been, in my opinion, the best pitcher in this league this year. And, you, you have a guy that throws strikes like that, it, it's great to play behind him. I think he proves how really good your defense is, too, because he's just challenging people. Hey, you hit the ball, my guys are going to get it. Absolutely. It's not like he strikes out that many guys and doesn't walk many guys, so you have to have a good defense behind him when he pitches. And, and again, the defense the defense has been good for us this year. The infield and our outfitters, all three of them, are so good out there running balls down and making plays. So it's good to have pitchers throwing strikes, especially when your defense makes the plays. Jack from Bloomington would like to know, when the season ends, do you take some time away from the game at all before starting to build the next year's team? You know, I, I really never ever take time off um, and looking, but September, October, even in November, it's really slow. A lot of guys really aren't really looking to sign, and um, so, you know, you're, you're never um, just totally just pushing it to the side, but it's just slow those months because Guys want to take time, and guys hope they're signed back with major league clubs. And um, but that doesn't mean that you know we're not always looking. Hal from Mountains View asks. He heard a pitcher in the American Association was suspended for having a substance under his cap in a game in independent baseball. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's um. I, mean, I heard that too, and I guess he got a couple games suspension. But you know, it's. If those are the rules. You can't do it. You can't do it. And I don't know what the substance was. I have no idea. Um, I know we've seen some of that in the big leagues, and I know guys do that just to get a better grip on the ball. And um, but again, if the rules are you can't do it. You can't do it. But if it's something that um, gives you a better grip, maybe baseball needs to revisit that. And you know, as long as it's not making pitches, you know, move more or more, you know, nasty movement, that's one thing. If it's more about just getting a better grip on the ball, then I personally don't see what the big deal is, but, and I know a lot of other people feel that way too, but if it alters pitches where there's more movement, then it should be suspended more than that. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, especially with their concern about safety, it would yep. seem that you'd want to make sure a pitcher wasn't throwing a 100 miles an hour fastball yep. away towards somebody's head or something. Though. Yeah, you, you um, and again, I, I really don't know in this case what it was, um, but again, I know it's no secret pitchers do it around everywhere. And if it's more about just getting a better feel for the ball, especially on those cold nights, it's just, it's the way it is. And um, But you can't do it. But maybe that's something they should look into and just for a pitcher to get a better you know, grip on the ball. Carl from West St. Paul uh, asks, every park seems to have some quirky features to it for players. What do you think are some of the quirky features of CHS field? Hey, not much other than our short right field and it's the high wall. Um, I think the field plays good. I think it's normal, and um, but you know what? It just depends which way those flags are blown. There's times when guys ball, guys hit balls good the right field, but if that wind's blowing across, it's not going to go out. And um, all it just depends which way the, the flags are blown. But it is a right, it is a short right field here with a high wall, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a home run. It just depends on the flags. A question that should be dear to George's heart. Kenny wants to know why the media people always seem to mention that left-handed pitchers are goofy and quirky. You know what? I never understood it either, and I was called goofy my whole career. I am kind of goofy, but um, <laughs> that's the way it goes. And lefties, they don't wear their hats straight, and they wear them crooked, and a um, little geeky. And I guess I was a little geeky when I pitched, but I don't, I don't understand why, but that's the way it goes, and I was goofy as well. That's what I was told. I mean, I think that 
what most people would consider one of the quirkiest pitchers of all time, Mark Fidrich, was yeah, a right-hander. No, right. Nobody's not calling that. Yeah, you have some weirdos out there, and um, but it's um, I don't think people are going to call Chris Sale goofy or um, Kershaw goofy, you know, and Bumgarner too. So I don't know. That's just something that just people say, and maybe sometimes you see the guy with the crooked hat and a little awkward motion, and that's why they say it. Concerned mom would like to know, how do you convince your child not to use chewing tobacco? You know what? They shouldn't use it, and she's right, and um, you got to just tell them it's not good for you, and don't do it, and I never used it, and I know some guys do, and but I guess it's personal preference. If guys want to do it, they're going to do it, but they shouldn't do it. Just, just get some bubble yum, blow a couple bubbles, and you should be good. <laughs> Uh, Sam from Plymouth would like to know who are some of your favorite players you've coached. You know, I've met so many of them over the years. And, you know, there are so many. Um, there's been so many. I couldn't even pick a few favorites. But um, you know, on this team, obviously, I love the way Sanko plays the game. He comes out. He's a great guy, great teammate, and he plays the game hard. I've never, never, ever seen him not run out of ball. And you like to have guys like that. And, you know, any guy that um, comes out here caring about winning and puts the team first, you, you, you love having guys like that on the team. Phil from Minneapolis would like to know, what do you think are some of the keys to throwing a no-hitter? You know what, you get a few breaks, throwing strikes, you have a luck, you know, some luck here and there, but um, I mean, Hamill's throwing yesterday and center fitter made two nice plays out there on the warning track, so you need to get some breaks to have a no-hitter and have some things fall your way, and it's hard to do. Kyle from St. Paul wonders why it is that that he's never understood the rule where if a third strike is dropped, the batter can run. Why does that make sense? You know what? It doesn't. And that's the rule, and I don't even know why that's the rule, but that's the way it is, and if those are the rules, and that's what we, we go with. Do you know if that's always even been a rule? Or? Yeah, not in Little League. Not when I was in Little League, it wasn't, but, um, but once you start high school and go up, it's what it is, and yeah. I don't know why, but it is what it is. What can you do? Mike, the Rockies fan, would like to know. Um, he's been a Rockies fan for a long time and always hears that it's it's much more difficult to pitch in a higher altitude. Why does that make such a difference, do you think? It's, it does make a difference. I don't know. The ball flies there. It's just something about it. Um, the, ball, the ball just flies out of there. And when I pitch there, I remember I pitched in Colorado Springs, like when I pitched in AAA. As a pitcher, it, it's hard to explain. And we're talking about the foreign substance. You can't, it's the, you can't feel the ball. It's too slick, and it's hard to control. And you know, I threw a split with my best pitch, and I remember pitching there, and I, I couldn't get a good grip for it. And for some reason, I wasn't really dropping as much. And it's just the way it goes there. And, Again, you better get the drop there because the ball's fly there when you hit it. That ball just carries and carries and so it's it's just the way it is there. Hard to grip hard to grip a ball, get you know, get a good feel for it and the ball flies there. That was interesting. I didn't know about the grip part. Yeah, it's seriously there. It's I remember when I pitched, it's funny, I remember when I pitched there, and I remember we still always talked to our pitching coach, it's hard to grip the ball, we couldn't feel it, and he talked to their coaches and they say they put pine tar on it and Case like that, where guys couldn't get the feel for it, guys, I guess illegally, were putting pine tar on, on their fingers or somewhere just to get a better grip for it, not to have more movement, but to get a better, better feel for the ball. It's just tough when you, when the ball just feels so slick and you just can't get a good feel for it. Interesting. Ken from Woodbury would like to know after hearing what a big football fan you are, what are some changes you'd like to see in the NFL? Uh, I love watching the NFL. I love it. I love watching the NFL Sunday ticket every Sunday. And, um, you know, it's um, I would probably need more time on that one. If you ask me that same question next week, I'll have a better answer because there's a couple times like you've asked me a question and it's like, and I just give you an answer, and then I thought about it after, and it's like, you know what? I wish I would answer it differently. So do me a favor, ask me that one next week, and I'll have a better answer for you on the NFL. Okay, we'll return to that Ken next week. For fans out there, this week the Saints had a, a, a massive pillow fight in the stands, so we had a few questions from um, people related to that. So Sherry from Savage, first of all, asked, the pillow fight looked a lot of fun. If you were participating in it, who would you have gone after? Um, 
I probably would have gone after um I would have probably gone after Holy Sheldon. He talks a little bit. He's um Yeah, he talks he talks some um, and obviously in a good joking way, so he'd be a guy I'd like to smack around a little bit. John from St. Paul would like to know who you thought would win a pillow fight on your team. Um Gak's the biggest guy, so let's go with Gak. If Gak gets mad, and he gets mad sometimes, I probably wouldn't want to be standing in the way of him swinging my those. And we have a question about, in the pillow fight of the century, Dan Kazrowski versus Mitch Elliott. Who would you pick in that one? I would take Mitch Elliott just because he's younger and he's quicker, and he can move around a little bit better. And Kaz is obviously, you know, he's, he's fine, but he's a little bit older than Mitch. Mitch is just a quick guy. Mitch can move around pretty good. Excellent. Tim from Monticello would like to know, uh, understanding that you're a fellow Bay Area guy, what do you think the San Jose Sharks need to do to win the Stanley Cup? Grew up there, but I really haven't followed hockey as much over the years, so I really don't know too much about it. And, uh, I just, I see the Wilder in the playoffs every year, and I pull for them, and I hope, I hope they can pull it off. So I'm rooting for the Wilder more than I am for the Sharks. Lynn from St. Louis Park asks, she knows that you have a very small amount of time during the season, but do you make personal appearances for local charities and what kind of events do you appear for? Yeah, yeah, we, um, it's funny, we had a clinic today for um, like 160 to 180 or 200 kids here today. And there's times, yes, we do make appearances, we do do camps. Um, you know, it's usually when they tell me we have an appearance there, I need a few guys, we go do it. And um, if we have camps here, we'll go do that. So we do do them. It's just, as they tell me, we need a few guys for them. We get the guys and they go to home. That's set up by the organization yes, itself? Yes, pretty much, yes. Okay. Just so you know there, Lynn. And our last question from Jake is, I saw a guy who ate 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes in some eating contest. How many hot dogs could you eat in 10 minutes? I definitely eat a lot of hot dogs, but in 10 minutes, I'm not, no, I wouldn't be doing that. I'm not going to get sick over it, but I think for sure three and probably four. Um, and I would enjoy them, but I would take my time doing it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, George. Thank you. We want to thank you for joining us on Strike Zone this week. If you have your own questions for the St. Paul St. Skipper, please send them to askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com. That's askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com. Please have them in by Friday at noon so we can give them to the Skipper a couple of days before recording our show. We thank you for joining us. I'm Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Strike Zone.